The New Marketing Show is brought to you by Trinity Web Media. Trinity Web Media solves business problems through effective digital marketing. TrinityWebMedia.com. Hey, everyone. Welcome to The New Marketing Show, the marketing show where we talk about how effective marketing solves business problems. This week, the show is brought to you by... I know it's not brought to you by anybody because I fucked up before and this is the second run at it. So. <laughs> Here we go. And here's my co-host, Kevin Everly. Hey, Kevin, how are you today? Hey, Greg. How are you doing today? Keeping me on my feet with these intros here. Yeah, you know, I'm piss and vinegar, right? Last year, last week's show was brought to you by piss and vinegar. This one's by, brought to you by, I don't know what the hell technology does, but anyway, we're, we're through that. <clears throat> but more, more, more than anything, I'm excited to introduce our special guest, Chris Lee. Chris Lee is... WordPress developer, he's a CRM consultant and specialist, founder, co-founder, whatever he wants to claim of Purple CRM, and all-around good guy that I've known for close to 10 years. So, Chris, thank you for joining the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on with you guys. Oh, man, no problem. So, you know, I was going back and I was thinking about when we actually met, and, you know, and I, I believe that we, Chris and I met in about 2008, 2009 through Twitter. I know that we were talking about either Chris's college days, and I found out he was a Hoya. <laughs> and and to the day, I don't even know what the hell a Hoya is. I mean, I know the mascot's a bulldog, but what the hell does that have to do with a Hoya? Hoya Saxa, as they say, Hoya, right? Yeah, Hoya Saxa. <clears throat> and then, and and uh, we also met through some of the charity work Chris was doing uh, for Twestival, and we met over Twitter. And then we ended up working together in the same co co working collaborative space at Gangplank. So. You, you know, Chris, thinking about this, this was a real magical time when you could actually meet people online and bring the relationship into real life and have real interactions. And I think back to all the great folks that I met in Phoenix at the time when, when I was living there, uh, you, Chuck Reynolds, Jonathan Crisotti, Scott Yako, Josh Zeering I met. That's a whole nother talk show, how, how me and Jay-Z met. But, you know, everybody else like that, when we were able to actually come together in person and actually work together be a part, a big part of each other's life. Susan Byer too. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Susan and all of us be a big, big part of each other's lives. And it was really cool. And I don't think that, you know, that, that happens as much anymore as it did back then. Yeah. I think, uh, I think there was a kind of a golden age of Twitter back when, uh, when it came up before it got, you know, ruined by so many of the marketers. Uh, I think my bad. My bad. It was, I think it was actually huge in Phoenix because you know we're so geographically dispersed that it allowed a lot of us to meet each other online or meet in person, and then continue to have interactions online. You know, in between all of our meetings, and, and I think it really accelerated and deepened a lot of the friendships that that many of us still have today. So it yeah. was it was awesome back in the two thousand eight two thousand nine days with PodCamp and and you know. Oh, Francine, all, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, you know. Man, all of that stuff was magical. I remember there was a, a night of us playing playing ping pong at the old Gangplank. And for people who don't know, Gangplank is a collab, collaborative co-working space. Uh, I, You know, I hate to call it an incubator, but it really was an incubator for us w without, the, w without the investment. I remember a late night there playing ping pong with Gary Vaynerchuk and Matt Mullenweg. Yeah. And like that was like 2008, 2009. And like today, that stuff just doesn't happen the way that it did back then. Yeah, that was at Francine's, after Francine's conference, everybody decided to go back over to Gangplank. And uh, yeah. Gary Vee played poker with everybody for, for a while. And then uh, yeah. at Gangplank, we had uh, Wii Tennis up. So I remember Gary Vee and Matt, uh, you know, Mullenway, the creator of WordPress, were playing Wii Tennis pretty, pretty seriously against each other. Um, it, was, it was cool. It was super cool. Like those are those were you know not to be like get off my lawn or anything, but like those were the golden age of, in my mind of of the startup culture that you know you came out of and that I came out of, and you know and I think back at, I think back at Gangplank at that time, you know, the the companies who came out of Gangplank at the the same time together, your company Ver with Chuck Chris. Jonathan and and Scott Yako, Scott, my yeah. other my my first company, which merged into Trinity Web Media Marketing Press, uh, uh, you know, Authority Labs and Pagely were just behind, just before us, you know, and, and Ward Andrews kind of gave us the blueprint. 
of all that stuff. And it was just a magical time to be associated in that startup culture. Yeah, it was. Um, and, and at that time, you know, Gangplank was super cutting edge. There, there wasn't other stuff like it. They, Gangplank wasn't following the model of, you know, a tried and true path that everybody else had done. Whereas now when you look around, you know, there's, there's a ton of co-working places. There's a ton of collaborative workspaces. And, uh, and that, that's not, that, that, that didn't exist uh, at the time. And, and Gangplank was, was very, very much, you know, a thought leader. And, and I even think the, the way they did it was still so different from the way that most people do it today. And, and there were relationships that came out of that methodology that just, that can't be duplicated. Yeah, I totally agree. And I mean, the model is unconventional because Jade Meskel and Derek Neighbors, the two founders of Gangplank, are pretty unconventional thinkers. You know, what I mean, they're, they're, yeah. I think that, you know, I would have loved to known them like when they were like teenagers or whatever, like the way that they've disrupted that whole space. I wonder how much trouble they were causing way back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so tell us a little bit about Purple CRM and, and, and your business, you know, ethos and, and where you fit in, in, in that space. So, yeah, so we're, uh, we're a small digital agency. Um, we're pretty focused on infrastructure. So, you know, we come, we've been around since 2001 and we started as a, a CRM company, um, customer relationship management. So, you know, for people that are unfamiliar with that, just basically systems that are designed to help keep track of uh, a company's customers and prospects and vendors and, and just everything and just and, and track the interactions um, amongst those people. So, so we, we started out, doing that in 2001 and worked with, you know, quite a, quite a few bigger companies over the years doing lots of ongoing development. And, uh, and then over the years, we just kind of, we kind of pivoted. So I think back around 2008 too is when, you know, social kind of started here in Phoenix and, and I started getting into WordPress and, and I just enjoyed that. So, you know, one of the things I, I learned from Greg uh, over the years was that your business should it should support your life and what you want to do, you know? And, and when we were in big CRM for a long time, yeah. it wasn't very fun. You know, you're dealing with big companies and just shipping code and not really seeing much, much impact. I mean, I'm sure it was there, but nobody cared to talk to us. So, you know, I, I know you engineered your company to support what you wanted to do and the kind of lifestyle you wanted to have. And, and just by seeing that, you know, I realized that I wanted to do different things, and then we we pivoted the company towards those. Well, thank you. That's 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 a huge compliment coming from someone you know, someone like yourself who I have always you know respected and admired. So, I mean, the other thing that I real quick before we get into a couple of questions here for you, Chris. Chris knows the best restaurants up and down the coast, and not just this coast. I mean, like Kevin, like you know, your coast. Are I mean, Chris doesn't mess around. I like. And I think the one time you and I were together and we were looking for the best fish tacos in San Diego. And what did I do? I had to text somebody that I knew 400 miles away to tell me. And he came up with El, the El Norte in Carlsbad Village. And we hopped off the five and got there. And to the, today, to the day, that's still my favorite taco shop. It's not a taco spot. It's not a shop. It's actually a, a pretty dope cantina. But it's, uh, you know, I always say like, Dining highlights are always funny, you know. When I think I'm going to a cool hit place, and I show up, and the Lee family is there, you know, Chris, Heather, Chris, his wife Heather, and his three kids. So it's it's awesome. And got I got to give a shout out to my little man Hayden Thunderman. <clears throat> I got to give a shout out to my little guy. I mean, I, I hope that you know he, you know, he he's one of my favorite characters in the world. <laughs> and, and you'll agree, I mean, Chris, he is a character, correct? <laughs> He has a lot of personality. He was, yeah. he, was he was here. They were here uh, a year and a half ago, and and, and, and uh, Mr. Thunderman wanted me to watch him do kung fu on the beach. <laughs> yeah, that was the best. In the dark. Yeah. In, in the, the dark. dark. Near, to- in the, near Tower Sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> at Tower Sixteen, it all goes down at Tower Sixteen, man. That's so, right. so Chris, I'm interested to know what is the most common problems, or you know, common problems that Purple CRM solves. Um, I mean, one of the big ones is, is that we all get busy, right? So, you know, if, if we're not keeping track of our interactions with, with prospects or customers, it's, it's real easy to, to lose touch with them and, and lose where we are 
in, in the process. And, and with, with these systems too, it's not just really just tracking interactions. They've become so customizable that, that they can be molded around different departments of a company. So the support department functionality, the marketing department functionality, et cetera. So, so you can even build your sales processes, your fulfillment processes. You can build a lot of that into the CRM. So they ultimately can end up just really supporting the operations of your whole business. Greg, we talk about the client experience often. So often, in fact, you're probably tired of hearing me talk about it. But Chris, I love how this improves that prospect's experience for your clients. No, I'm, I'm never tired of hearing you talk yet. <laughs> it should be the other way around. You should be tired of hearing me talk. But <clears throat> so a couple of the platforms that you work with, do you, do, do, does the CRM process, does that help? You can help automate some of the marketing and some of the, the, the drip campaigns and, and and kick the prospect and nurture the prospect, I guess, into you know a, a client or you know go from a lead to pr- prospect to lead to client. And you can speak to them differently through that, you know, through an automated process. Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, with uh, with a system like Infusionsoft that we use and the integrations it has with with things like WordPress and Facebook and all different kind of things, um, we can set up systems to basically have it. So there's, I like to think of it as a series of, of funnels, right? If you think of the, the concept of a funnel, you know, a whole bunch of people come in the top and they, people get nurtured and then, you know, people come out the bottom. Well, a lot of times people fall out of the funnel, right? So what happens to all those people that are falling out the side for this reason or that reason? Well, with, marketing automation, CRM, you can have other funnels that catch those people. So, so basically with, let's just say, you know, a business is solving a, a few primary problems for, you know, their ideal customer, um, you can have it. So when someone comes to one of the pages on your website, well, then Facebook and, you know, your site is set up to know that they're interested in that specific problem. You know, they're reading the content about that problem we serve them an offer for a lead magnet, um, you know, with, with regard to that specific problem and then continue to move them down the funnel just as, about that problem. So basically we can be super contextual with people, um, regarding their specific needs. Like, like you're saying, Greg, you can talk to different people, different ways, depending on what they're interested in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it, it, and it's just, it's whatever they're interested in. And when they land on that page, then the funnel, you know, mechanics can take over. So if you're posting a bunch of stuff on social or you're driving traffic with Facebook ads, you know, if someone clicks on one of those ads, they end up on a page about a given problem. Well, then you can have a funnel, you know, uh, surrounding that problem that identifies them. They've self-selected in because they're interested in that thing. And then, and then the, the, the process can help nurture them through and convert them. So more or less, your clients are able to continue to reach the prospects that fall out of a main sales uh, funnel by introducing them to one more specific with their interests or how they want to receive a message or, you know, form of communication, et cetera. Yeah. And then even, even within a funnel too, you know, it, it takes multiple touches, you know, to get people to convert. So, so we have to continue to nurture them, whether it be through email or whether it be through, you know, Facebook ads or social posts or whatever that might be. So, so, so a couple of moments ago, you mentioned, you know, th- through lead magnets. Yep. So do you have, a, what are a couple examples of effective lead magnets that you've seen, you know, through your experience? So for us, one, one of the things about lead magnets and, and, and just to, for anybody that doesn't know that term, it's basically you're offering uh, someone something of value in exchange for their email. And that's basically what the transaction looks like. And, and some of the characteristics of a really good lead magnet are that they're super specific. So, you know, if something's real general, people typically aren't very interested. And, and also, oftentimes, it's, it's, it's discreet. It's limited. So, so, you know, some people, you'll see lead magnets of a 12-week e-course, mm-hmm. or you'll see, you know, a 300-page ebook or whatever. And those typically don't um, tend to be effective lead magnets, you know, because people – a lot of them, people don't even take the time to, to digest what, what those are. So you want something small where they're going to get value right away. And that puts you in a position where you can continue to, to lead them to that next step. Yeah. So, so things like templates, cheat sheets, 
you know, those kind of things are, are what typically works really well as a lead magnet. Yeah. So something a little bit more simpler than the, the big, long, you know, uh, J bear, you know, type of, you know, very, very comprehensive, very, very detailed, long, you know, 50 page ebook, you know, a, a worksheet, a white paper, you know, uh, a, a great lead man that's actually worked for our company has been the Trinity web minutes that I've been producing. You know, I, I've, it, it's amazing. I've done about 60 of them now. I can't, I can't believe that I've, I've done 60 of them, but you know, they're of value where somebody can go ahead and watch the video and impart that knowledge, that practical knowledge right in their business right away. I think the mark that we're missing is we give it away for, you know, for free, you know, through Instagram and through Facebook. And we also have them on our, on our website. Maybe it's time that we also try to get an email address for some of that and, and maybe um, script it as more of a course or more of a, a, a learning type of journey. Yeah. Or, or if what you give them is a value in and of itself, then you know, it can be part of a bigger offer. So, you know, it, when we when we kind of work through the funnel thing, there, there's a number of steps typically. So, you know, th there's content. And one of the concepts that we always talk about is value in advance. We always want to be giving people value before we ask for anything back from them. So, you yeah. know, with our social posts or ads, we're pushing people to content. And that content should be giving people value before we ask anything of them. So we're not throwing a pop-up in their face right when they get to the site. Um, maybe, you know, it's after they get through 75% of the page or a certain amount of time on, on page, then we know what they're interested in. So then we can offer them a lead magnet, you know, that's contextual. Uh, then the next stage is an entry point offer. Some people call it a tripwire. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and with what you're, we're saying, Greg, uh, a thing that, that works really well for tripwires are splinter offers. It's where you can carve off a piece of a bigger offering where you give them a, a little piece that they can get value from right away, but then it will lead them right into that bigger offer. You know, so it, like you're saying a course, maybe that course is that next step. And then from the tripwire, we move them towards a core offer. And then beyond that to profit maximizers where it's not just all about profit, but we're just trying to give them more value. Um, again, we know what our value proposition as a company is. We wanna help them get to, you know, the, the stage that they want faster and easier. So, you know, we can give them more services like that in, in addition to, you know, their spend. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, a lot of times people will talk about a, a funnel in relation to like a, the whole dating process, you know. So, you know, when you start interacting with someone, you, your normal relationship is you're going to start talking. And then, you know, maybe, you know, that goes well. So then you decide to go out for coffee. That goes well. Then let's go out to dinner, you know, and then from there it progresses. So it's not like so many people out there are marketing where it's like, hey, buy our stuff. You know, it, it's got to be more, more of that normal relationship. And that's, that's what we try to model with, uh, with effective funnels. That's funny. That, that's funny that you liken it to the dating, to the, the dating world, because maybe that's, maybe that's where, you know, people that I know have gone wrong. <laughs> they're, alive and they're, still, they're still woefully single and forever alone so yeah <laughs> we all understand how it, uh, difficult it is getting the right message to the target audience i love how this can help keep leads alive past that first point of uh, contact and the opportunity that that provides for your clients yeah and, and and that's the thing is that there's so many people out there trying to push stuff people have so many options with regard to where they want to spend their attention is we want to be putting value out there and allow people to see things that resonate with them and, and opt in for, for whatever it is that we have. So we, we've all got our people, right? Our ideal clients. And we've got people that are, are terrible fits for us. So, you know, we want to be ourselves. We want our content to be ourselves. I know Greg, you, you know, you and Trinity are really good at that. And, and that way you can find your, your people. And, and if you're giving them content, you know, that's, that's helping them identify and solve their problems. Well, then it just helps nurture them through that process. And, and I think that you just said, you just hit it on the head. You know, I've always said, you know, all going through business school and doing, you know, the business school of real life and gangplank business school, where we're all graduates of, you know, you know, everybody that has always said people want to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. 
And I always say, and I think I've said it on this podcast before, I've said it before, is they can know, they can like you, they can trust you. But if you can't solve their problem, you're not a candidate to work with them. You know, you may know, like, and trust me, and we may be, we may have a great time out to dinner, but you're not going to do business with anybody who can't solve your problem. So I, I think that that's right. the key thing is, you know, <clears throat> you know, Kevin and I and Tammy here have been, we've been working really hard on, you know, a lot of client strategy. And, uh, and Susan Beyer, if you're listening, you should be, you're going to be really proud of us that we've been creating these audience personas and saying what traits are, you know, what, what are the typical traits of our ideal clients and who do we, what are their problems that we need to solve? How can we solve, how, how can we solve their problem through effective content so they can begin to know, like, trust us? Because we've already demonstrated in the beginning that we can solve the problem. I love that you brought up the value in advance. Simply stated, you're gaining trust with your audience over time by uh, imparting something of value with each interaction. Right. And I know Susan, Susan, for both of us, Susan's been talking about this, this whole process for years. And, and like you and I are, are watching kind of as the rest of the world is kind of waking up to people talking about, you know, problem focus and ideal clients and all of that. Um, but yeah, it's something that, that she's, she's been talking about for, for a long, long time to both of us. I know it's like, she's a, you know, her, her methodology, you know, is, is, is so has been ahead of the game forever, you know, for, for as long as I've known her, it's like people are starting to catch up and like now, now they're almost thinking that she's like, you know, wow, this is like, you just came up with this. This is like an overnight new idea. Yeah. Like, uh, no, I've been preaching this stuff since you know, she started our company. She started her company in 2009 audience audit and you know, everything going on from there. It's just super interesting how the whole thing ties back to, you know, our content strategies tie back to solving problems, which getting people to know, like, and trust us, whether or not we nurture them through a funnel and they self-identify. And once they can self-identify, we know what kind of content to serve out to them, you know? And so, right. you know, having a CRM and capturing all that stuff is probably the missing link for a lot of businesses who are already doing all the other good stuff. You agree? Yeah. I, I mean, Definitely. We see, we see tons of people out there. Well, we see a lot of people that are just doing it wrong. You know, we see a lot of brochure sites still out there where people are just spewing a bunch of information up, but, but yeah, f for us, you know, we, we, we think about, you know, what's the end, you know, and, and, and that's why, you know, we, we kind of work on this infrastructure and the plumbing that, that we do is, is we want to give people sites that are not only going to tell the story that's going to help their ideal clients, but have the mechanisms in place to help nurture those people along the way and, and ultimately, you know, turn into customers for the business. I totally agree. As online marketers, I think we all are familiar with the skepticism that can kind of come from being an online brand and some of the advertising associated with that. Uh, I find it extremely interesting how this process can kind of curb that and cut through while still getting to that target audience and getting them to, uh, you know, gain trust with your clients. There, there's some things that 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 we all need to do. So, you know, like like you guys know, lists die. So, you know, I know there's some people that are out there that are just putting lead capture in place, and, and they think that that's going to solve all their problems. And maybe they email somebody, you know, once every six months. So, so you kind of for us, it's a whole systemic thing. It's it's you got to have the funnel in place. You got to have the the regular email follow up in place. You got to have content that you know speaks to the different funnels that a company has in place. You have to have social that, you know, drives people that content, you, you know, you, you might have Facebook ads that's driving the social. Um, so it's, it's just for us, you know, we see it being the most successful when all of these systems are, are aligned and everything is working together as opposed to, you know, let's grab your email and, and then I'll email you in six months and think that that's going to solve all my problems. You know, to, to, to quote Breaking Bad's Jesse Pinkman, it sounds like science, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so much more science in, in this marketing game than, you, you know, it's, it's a balance. It's like, you know, two parts science, one part's creativity. You know, a lot of, you know, one part content creation and you, you mix it all together. But the science and the analytics, you know, if you don't, you know, I'm a big believer and I've preached, 
you know, I don't know how long I, the re- review, refine, repeat. If you don't measure, you don't see what's working. You're, you're going to keep doing the wrong things and, you know, you're going to spin your wheels and work, you know, and, and, and people who do things wrong are still working hard, but they're working hard at the wrong things. So it sounds like, you know, your methodology right. with purple CRM and, and using CRMs, you know, really is able to put people, you know, through analytics and, and through self-identification, uh, you know, and automation, you know, into the right, on the right path so that they can, you know, so, so they can almost be dis- successful despite themselves at some point. Yeah. I mean, we all know it. Yeah. I mean, we all know as, as small business owners it's that right? it's hard, right? <laughs> so if, if you kind of don't have a, have a strategy and, and you're not iterating on that strategy, it, it's easy to just, you know, work yourself to death on, you know, a million different things. And, and it's those people, God bless um, them. They're working hard, but they're, they're working they're driving a hundred miles an hour in the wrong direction, basically. And, and I mean, and, yeah. and, and it, it's awesome to know that, you know, there are experts out there like you and Heather and, you know, your teams who can go ahead and, and Jeff, you know, Jeff Crawford, who works with you guys, who's a, a big part of your team, who's a fantastic person. Yep. Another person that I got to know really well from Gangplank, you know, are out there and really wanting to write the ship. And it, it, it's probably amazing. Like once you put the system in place, how much relief do your clients just say, oh, my God, Chris, <laughs> why did we do this sooner? Yeah, well, and, and, and we know why, because it's hard. Sure, it takes yeah. a lot of work to do it, you know. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's funny, like, I, you know, we talked a little bit before about how your company should kind of fulfill, you know, your your goals or what you want in life and you know, we, 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 we've been in business for 17 years without really marketing ourselves. And, uh, and we're, we're finally starting to, to kind of get some of that in place. And, and to do that, you know, we, we've kind of tried to go through some of our own whys and, and, and figure things out. And, and, and it turns out, like, for us, we, we just relate so much to those small business owners that we don't want to see people fail. You know, and I've kind of really? tracked it back. I tracked it back to to my dad in my dad's restaurant. You know, my dad had, you know, what was one of the best restaurants in town. And, you know, we talk about food and why I talk about food so much. And it's like, oh, that's, this is why I talk about food. But my dad had one of the the finest restaurants, Mm -hmm. you know, in town for 20 something years and he lost it. And and he lost it because his clientele aged because it was fine dining. They were wealthy and, um, and he never had any new customers in. And it was the, the eighties, it was the age of macaroni grill. Sure. So you know, I've always hated macaroni grill because that's what came in. You know, everybody wanted huge plates for $5 or whatever it was. Um, and, and if it would have lasted, you know, a few more years, Morton's came back, Ruth's Chris came back and, and, uh, and I've just seen, I've seen those businesses, sure. you know, those business owners, I didn't get to know my dad until I started busting in the restaurant really, you know? Seen those people work so hard about all that stuff that we're talking about, and I've seen it fail, and and, and that's why we don't want to do big CRM. That's why we want to work with the local blind company or the local roofer or you know people here in in Arizona. It's you know you, you figure out your why, and then all of that goes into who, who's your ideal client and what are the problems you're solving. So th- so there's just a whole bunch that goes into it. And it's not something that a business owner is just going to fall into. You know, it's hard. It's hard to figure it out. And, you know, one of the reasons I started out my, you know, started on my own entrepreneurial journey, and Kevin did too, is to affect change. Now, I've always wanted to affect change in the most cost-effective, least painful way for other business owners like myself who don't have the same type of savvy and the same type of smarts. And I think that's why we've always gotten along. We've done so much, you know, good work together. And, and, you know, I, I can't, you know, begin to thank you, Chris, you know, enough for the things that you've taught me about, you know, uh, running a business and how to treat people and also how the, how willing you are to give, lend your expertise. I'll never forget. I don't know if I've told anybody else this story, but <clears throat> one night, <laughs> one night at Gangplank, it sounds like, it sounds like, you know, one time that one time at band camp, <laughs> one night at Gangplank, Chris, stayed there with me until like 3 a.m. 
because we were launching jbear.com and we were having that da- database issues. And that technical stuff with da- DBs, I was like, at that time, I was green. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, I was a rookie. And I'm dealing with one of the biggest marketers who I respect, a client of mine. And I'm like, here we go. He's like, okay, w- we did everything right. What's left to do? And I'm like, I guess the only thing left to do is push the button and to launch. Remember? And I was like, and Chris, Chris looked at me. He had everything sewn up because he was the database guy. And I was just like, okay, whew, here we go. And I pressed the button and launched and everything worked out. And Chris turned to me afterwards and he goes, man, you got balls. I don't know if I would have just done that. <laughs> yeah, but it was like, but it was like 3.30 <laughs> in the morning. We were there wrestling with that data. Remember that? Yeah, no, I do. No, I, and, and I would say the exact same thing to you. I don't know anybody that's been more generous about, you know, giving their, their secret sauce, their opinions, you know, I mean, you talk about an abundance mentality. Um, I mean, you, you live that every day and, uh, and you, you've done that for me forever. So I, I'm super grateful for that. And I always will be. Well, I, I appreciate that. And I definitely appreciate your time being on. Let's, uh, I want to wrap up with a couple of rapid, rapid fire questions here, which, uh, I don't know. Let, let, let's see. Let's see. Kevin, let's see what Chris says about these. Ready? All right. What's the best CRM for small business? So, I mean, there's a lot out there and it depends on what, what you're looking to do. We, we like Infusionsoft, you know, we've been working with it, you know, since, uh, since 2008 and it's had its ups and downs, but we really think that, that they have done amazing things with the product lately. So we, we, we are still big fans of Infusionsoft. I also like Infusionsoft and more than anything, I like the fact that they know that they've had challenges with their product and they know it's not for everybody and they've stuck it through and they've done things to listen to their audience to make it better. Correct? Yep. Definitely. Okay. You being a ballet dad, Nutcracker or Swan Lake? I got it. I got to go Nutcracker. I mean, Nutcrackers, Nutcrackers are life because it's every single year, you know, some of these other ballets, the only cup up every few years. One year Marina was in 14 performances of Nutcracker uh, in just, you know, one December season. So I will, I will see it. I'll probably see it every year for the rest of my life. And we've even bought one of those nutcracker dolls every single year so far. So we have like, we have like 15 or 20 of them in in my house. So it's, it's nutcracker. Excellent. You know, I remember being a kid getting taken to the, uh, from my mother to the paper mill playhouse in Milburn, New Jersey, see nutcracker. I think I lasted half a performance because I was, I was a disruptive little kid, shall we say. I don't know. What's your favorite gangplank memory? You know, for me, it was just it was just working late with you and and the guys with Chuck and Jonathan and Connery and Scott. You know, it was it was just it was just hanging out and and, and having fellowship. It wasn't we, we didn't even have to talk all the time, you know, but when you're right. when you're working your ass off, you're working late. Uh, and it, the rest of the world is sleeping. It, it's nice to know that you have friends that are there doing the same thing. I couldn't agree more. You know, I always called it, you know, in the startup thing, it's, it's that, tr- it's, it's the being in the trench with your brothers, you know, like you would have things going yeah. on and I couldn't help you, but, and, and, and sometimes you couldn't help me, but the only thing that we could do is me to say, Hey dude, can I get you a sandwich? <laughs> can I, can, can I, can I go and you know what I mean? It was that uh, being in the trench with one another. And w- were you there on M- Mike Benner of uh, authority labs last day when he brought in the pet- petting zoo? <clears throat> Benner had, no. Benner had a petting zoo. He brought in a petting zoo on his last day working at a, th- uh, working in Chandler before moving to North Carolina. He subsequently has come back to Arizona, but he had a petting zoo in there. Now, if that's not a great hmm. workspace, I don't know what, else is so what's one small business or a business tool you can't live without you know i'm going to be super lame and and say my my bullet journal my planner i've gone back to physical after all these years and and for me one of the huge things is is the space constraint because you know when i've used some of these other tools like trello or things or whatever um, it's just so easy for task after task after task to just get thrown on there and then become completely unmanageable. I still love Trello. We use Trello all the time, but, but I'm ultimately the most productive when I'm really using my bullet journal. Well, that's, that's hilarious. Cause we use Asana. Okay. Yeah. Let me be honest with you guys. Let, let's be honest. 
Kevin uses a sauna really well. <laughs> Craig uses a moleskin notebook and he puts checks on it and he, he checks things off. For some reason, you know, being as digital as I am and I've been in my career, that just works for me. There's something about something so satisfying about putting a check next to something that I've done or crossing it off my list that it just makes it makes it the best. So, Kevin, do you have any other questions for Chris? I have one more, but I want to see if you have any. You know, Greg, I don't think I have any more questions, but Chris, thank you. This has been awesome. I've learned a lot about CRMs and, you know, thank you for coming on the show and imparting all that knowledge to our audience. Anytime. You know, I love you guys. So, you know, anything you need from me ever, always. Likewise. So my last question to you, Chris, who in our next guest show should we have on the show? Well, we mentioned her. Should you just hit up Susan Beyer? Okay. Susan? Susan, if you're listening, and God damn it, Susan, you're like one of my really great friends. Like, you better be listening to my podcast, right? <laughs> and and oh, listen, if Susan's not listening, and it's oh, Kevin, you and I are doing something really wrong. If Susan's not listening, it's me and you, Kev, and then it, it's Chris Lee. I, I, what the? Susan. All right. I'm coming for you, Susan. So, hey, Chris, thank you so much for being on. I, I had a lot of fun. I mean, thank you for helping, you know, our audience and hope that, <clears throat> you know, if there's anything that we can do for you, just let us know. And, you know, I, I really appreciate your time. Well, thank you guys. You know, I always, always love hanging out. Just look forward to it more. Awesome. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening to The New Marketing Show. Uh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, soon to be Spotify, iHeartRadio. Please leave us a review, rate our show. And if you have any topics you want us to cover, just let us know. Thanks for listening. Kevin, I'll talk to you later. All right, Chris, thank you for being with us.